Hello, my name is Annie and I am cooking a meal outside today using my SteelMade flat top and the new addition to the SteelMade line, the outdoor cooking base. It's the fall season and in Kansas that reminds me of two things. Number one, beautiful weather. And number two, it's hunting season. Our awesome friend Brad stopped by this last weekend and dropped off some deer steaks. And I was super excited about it because growing up in a family of 10 people, my brother and my dad, they all hunted. And that was great because then we had a freezer full of meat to feed our large family. I have not cooked deer steaks in a while, so I'm really looking forward to it. I went ahead and prepped them, which I'll talk about in a little bit. Um, and I didn't know if I'd be cooking them inside or outside, but the weather is gorgeous today. It's 70 degrees, sunny, it's perfect. And I thought this is a perfect opportunity to show off the outdoor cooking base that SteelMade just launched not too long ago. In order to begin cooking on your outdoor cooking base, of course, you need a standard or a pro SteelMade flat top. I have my cooking base up on casters, so the first thing you need to do is to make sure that all the casters are locked so it doesn't move while you're cooking because that's just not safe. You also need a propane tank, which the guys prepped for me, thankfully. Um, it's really simple to put those on, it just kind of screws on, and that's ready to go, but I will have to light, or if you are using it, you have to light the propane prior to putting the flat top on. You also want to make sure that you have your drip tray inserted before you put the flat top on so you don't run into having to lift a hot flat top off before you put the flat top on there. So I'm going to go ahead and get this started and uh, I'll put the flat top on there and then we'll get cooking. Now when I start the propane, I turn it on full open on the gauges on the propane tank so that I have time to put my flat top on. Once the flat top on, that acts as a wind barrier so then I will turn down the flames because boy do these get hot. And now we're ready to get cooking. The steel made flat top will heat really quickly with this propane flame underneath it. So make sure that you turn the gauge down or the, the nozzle down. You don't want a full flame because your flat top will get way too hot and you can cause warping. Um, it's already getting pretty warm. I have it really low right now. If you have a um, infrared thermometer, those are great. I can kind of gauge on my own how hot it gets because I cook on it all the time. But if you have an infrared thermometer, I would use that and make sure that you can just test how hot the flat top is getting. You really don't need it above, you don't want to go above 600 degrees. For what we're cooking, I need it about 400. Um, and just make sure that you watch that flame and don't get everything too warm because you don't want to cause any warping. If you have a pro flat top on here, it probably won't be a uh, problem. But again, you really just don't need it that hot to cook anything out here when you're grilling. All right, so let's go over to the food and I'll show you what we're doing today. All right, so I have my deer steak here. The deer steak is going to look gray, so please don't be alarmed. Any of you watching this, the steaks are good. It's just because I brined them in a salt water overnight to pull out the blood that was left in the steaks because they were very fresh. Um, I didn't want that gamey taste in them. So I did brine them in a salt ice water bath uh, overnight and then in vinegar for another hour before I brought them to room temperature out here. I washed them after the vinegar um, soak and then I applied some salt uh, just to add some flavor, but I'm going to keep it pretty simple with just salt, pepper, garlic powder, and I am going to use some fire bee spicy honey. If you haven't used honey on steak or marinated steak and honey, it's fantastic. It can be a tenderizer. Um, I kind of like the sweet and spicy taste and with uh, meat and sweet, they go really, really well together. Um, so it's just a nice little combination. We're going to do some asparagus and then just some potato cubes. Now, the potato cubes usually take a little bit longer to cook, so those are the first things that I'll put on the flat top, and I'll let those kind of gauge my temperature and what I'm working with, because I can hear them from the sizzle and what they're doing, and then we'll move on to the steak, and then the asparagus doesn't take anything at all. The first step that I need to do is I need to make sure that there's nothing on this flat top 
It looks pretty clean, but I just want to give it a quick rinse. I'm going to put some water on there and I'm just going to make sure there's nothing left over. Any leftover water droplets will steam off, which is fine. That kind of also tells me how hot the flat top is getting. So I just like to observe what it's doing at that time. Uh, the next part is to add some olive oil. This has a pretty good nonstick barrier seasoning on it now, but of course, to cook the potatoes, I need some oil, olive oil. That's, they're pretty uh, starchy and I kind of want them a little fried and browning. So I'm gonna throw on some olive oil, get it heating, and I'm gonna go ahead and get some heated on the other side as well. This propane fire really heats evenly. It's awesome, which makes it that much faster to cook with. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and throw in some potatoes and I'll salt and pepper them. I have them in cool water right now just so they don't turn brown while I cut them to prep them for the video today. If you put this on too fast and you're, or too late and your flat top is super hot, please be careful because the water will sizzle, sizzle and pop off of there. So I like to put it on in the beginning um, just to let it do its thing without actually getting anything splattering up at me because I am using water to keep them from turning brown. I'm just gonna add some pepper. and salt. This is kind of to taste, so I just go with it, but uh, probably a couple teaspoons of salt. So I can tell that this is starting to heat up pretty good because I can see that the olive oil is glistening, and I'm just gonna let it keep doing that. All right, so the next thing is I'm gonna prep the asparagus. I have a bunch of nice asparagus here. I'm just gonna stack them up right here, and I'm gonna cut off about the bottom, just the bottom parts of them because we really don't want all that hard, starchy part. And there we go, those will be ready to go on the grill soon. And I'm just gonna cook those in olive oil with salt and pepper and some garlic. And I have some fresh garlic that I'm going to prep. I like to use a mixture of fresh garlic and garlic powder. Um, because sometimes the fresh garlic will just put out a little bit better flavor. Um, however, the garlic powder coats more and better. Plus, it's fun to smash the garlic. I'm gonna be using garlic for the steaks as well, so I wanna make sure that I have plenty. I can see on my potatoes, there's some sizzling happen happening underneath there, so this is getting to be the right temperature. Um, I'll let those sit. The one thing about potatoes is you wanna let them sit for a little while before you turn them. It's so tempting to just keep turning stuff and keep moving it because it's just sitting there and you're worried that it's not doing anything. But you want it to be browned. So, you know, let them sit there for a while, let them do their thing and cook really well, and then start tossing them. I'm gonna season the steaks next, now that everything's getting pretty warm. So as you can see, they're gray. <laughs> but the inside is very red. A deer meat will be, a, it'll have a very red inside, um, more so than what you would get store-bought steaks and everything. Um, so again, in order to pull out any of that gamey taste that can occur, I soaked them in what I said earlier, and that's why they look great. There are other methods. Um, I would have soaked in buttermilk if I had buttermilk. I didn't, and I know you can add vinegar to milk to add, make buttermilk, but I just felt like this was probably the better bet right now. So I'm gonna season those real quick on here with salt and pepper. I already salted them prior to um, bringing them out here because I wanted them to be a little bit seasoned and set in. So I'm gonna add some pepper, garlic powder, each one, both sides. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put some honey on here. I will do it to both sides, but I'm just gonna do it to the first side that I'm gonna lay flat down on the grill. Now spicy honey does have a little bit of a kick, so if you don't like spicy, I'd suggest that you don't use spicy honey. A regular or raw honey it will be just as good, or just leave it with salt and pepper and garlic. Now I need to find, start the fun part of adding some butter and some garlic. Get that cooking for the steaks. All right, and I'm, I wanna get a really good caramelization on those steaks, which will happen, also be helped with the honey. So I need to get it to a little bit warmer because I can tell how the butter is sizzling that I need it to get a little bit hotter 
it's just about there, but for steaks you do want it pretty warm um, so that you get a nice sear on one side and then you can turn it over and turn on your burners and kind of finish them off. Potatoes are doing good. Some of them are starting to brown. I'm gonna go ahead and check if there's a sizzle by dripple, dripping some water onto the um, flat top. And there is, so that's exactly what I want. And I'm gonna go ahead and start adding the steaks to it. They will cook and so will the asparagus after a little while, um, but they'll cook and then I have to let the steaks rest. You always wanna let steaks rest. Um, if you cut in it too soon, it makes it less tender and uh, more of a tough meat. Um, so if you let it rest after cooking, then it, it, you should keep that tenderness in there. Got a little sizzle going on there. That sounds great. I'm gonna go and flip them. Some of them are turning brown. I wanna make sure they're all getting the opportunity. I'm gonna move them over. Give the asparagus the middle because asparagus likes to roll. All right, I added a little bit of butter to the top of these just to kind of melt down as they're searing on the other side. But I'm gonna go ahead and put some honey on this side and then it's time to flip them. And then I'll start the asparagus and our meal's about done. Turn these over. Oh, that's nice and brown. That looks great. Fantastic. Beautiful. All right. Really only needs to be on the other side for mm, three to five minutes. Maybe not even that, not even five minutes usually, but a few minutes just to get it browned and cooked. And then we'll set it off on a plate and let it rest for a little while. Time for the asparagus. So I'm gonna add some olive oil. Throw the asparagus down, spread it out. Make sure they all get a nice coating. Salt and pepper the asparagus. However, the flat top should have some of that seasoning from the potatoes already on it. So that works to my advantage there. Throw on some of that garlic to cook with it. Now I am just a home cook, so I'm sure there are better ways of preparing asparagus or some fancy uh, recipes. I don't do that. <laughs> I keep it really simple with salt and pepper and garlic. So, you know, be nice in the comments. <laughs> All right, that steak looks done, so I'm gonna clear off my cutting board. Let's take these steaks off to rest. I felt them. Kinda feels like my cheek, which is about right. And then I'll finish cooking the asparagus. I'm actually gonna move the asparagus over into the steak seasoning, because I really like that. That's another personal preference. Some of that honey flavor will then be on the asparagus. Just be aware if you're doing that. Um, but I feel like the, the steak seasoning will marry with the asparagus really well. Okay, so I have the steaks over there resting and I wish I had a better way to tell you when asparagus is done, but the way that I like to test is to taste it. <laughs> that was really good. That honey, oh, that's really good. That's probably my favorite asparagus I've ever had. I'm gonna go ahead and take those off. These are a perfect chewy. They have a little crisp and tenderness with it. That combination is fantastic. The potatoes are just about done. Uh, the, some of them are looking pretty brown. I mean, I've tossed them a few times and uh, just making sure they're worked. But again, to taste or to tell if those are done, you want to take a bite into one of the bigger pieces. Now, warning, potatoes hold heat, so they're really hot. <laughs> so make sure when you take one off that you Kind of let it sit on your spatula for a minute or blow on it because when you bite into that, it's going to be super, super hot. Just a little bit longer and those will be fantastic. Okay, the potatoes are done. Like I said, potatoes can take forever. So I'm going to scoop those over here just to kind of make it look nicer. You know, be, be fancy. Get them off the grill so they don't get overcooked, which can happen and then they Tastes like potato crisps, which some people like that. That's fine. 
I am gonna go ahead and turn off the flames and clean it. It'll still be hot, so I'm gonna clean it as it's cooling down. And make sure you turn off both valves, the little valve and the big valve on the propane. Then I'm gonna start scraping into that drip tray. All right, I just cleaned off the flat top and I think it took maybe, I think about three minutes, maybe four minutes. I cannot express how much of an advantage that is to using a flat top. Yes, I have other dishes, but usually I wouldn't have everything in other dishes. We do that for the video. I would take the butter just out of the, the wrapping. I would have the asparagus there washed and just ready to chop. I wouldn't really have any other dishes aside from what's holding the meat and what I'm serving the food on. All of my cooking dishes are done and that's awesome. So I got to do that outside today on the outdoor cooking base, which is compatible with my standard flat top, the pro flat top. And it also has the drip tray, a big drip tray out here, and it runs off of propane. I mean, it's just an awesome combination. I will tell you the last step to cleaning is that you have to let that drip tray cool down and make sure that you remove it, empty it, clean it. It's stainless steel. You can wash it in the dishwasher. Um, just empty it out and make sure you put a fresh one in before you start cooking on it again so that you have an empty drip tray when you try again. As always, if you have any questions about this product, the flat top, the outdoor cooking base, or any of our still made products, please go to our website, stillmadeusa.com, contact our support team. They're awesome, they're ready to help you. Check our website for answers. Check on YouTube for new cooking videos and tips and tricks. We also have social media sites. Go wherever you need to contact us and we're, we will gladly help you. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let us know if you have any questions. Have a great day.